This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Oh boy, oh boy. Hmm. Like I said before, I guess my sister? If you say my sister, then this is going into very different territory, though. <laughs> Mary? I haven't even thought about that stuff yet. Sachan, are you thinking about it already? Well, you brought it up, so I thought you were probably interested. Yeah, so, do you have someone you want to marry? No kidding? Okay, then I... Uh, qualified? I mean, you should have standards for who you want to marry. Shoe kicking is a new one on me. I haven't heard that one before. Shoe kicking? Ah, I get it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm always trying to weed out the process of, like, potential applicants, you know. Huh? Me? <laughs> and that's when Yuji realized his full potential and kicked his shoe into the sun. Hmm. Sounds kind of fun, I guess. Sure, I'll play. That seems like a very strange thing to demand for marriage, Sachi, but okay. Confident, huh? Well, it does seem like something you'd be good at, Sachin. Whoa, that went pretty far. Yeah, I'm not that confident, but... Yeah! <laughs> Guess I can't beat you after all, Sachan. <laughs> right now, Sachi's like, maybe I need to rethink these criteria. I purposely went a little easy on my kick, but I still ended up beating you, Kun. Every once in a while, being naturally athletic can be a curse instead of a blessing. You were the one who said I can't marry someone unless they can kick their shoe farther than me. You said that, no one else. I spent that night curled up in my bed, barely regretting coming up with that stupid qualification in the first place. There must have been a better way to hide my embarrassment than that. Oh, oh, she just said that so as not to be embarrassed. Oh. Okay, that makes a little more sense. And so, time slipped steadily by, my feelings unspoken. But as my next birthday grew near, my relationship with Yukun started to change in a different way. Party time! Party time! <laughs> That's not a good party time! Hmm? Oh, sorry, I was kind of spacing out. Yeah, you're right. Sorry. Yukun had always listened intently to my stories. This was the first time I could remember his attention wandering in the middle of a conversation. But my unease was relieved quickly enough. He apologized and listened to the rest of my story. I figured he must have just had something on his mind that day. And yet... Sachan, do you think there's a god? You know, one who knows everything and can do anything? If there's a god that's strong watching over us, even if things look really bad, it'll, it'll turn out okay in the end, right? I love these little ten-year-old kids having, like, this intense <laughs> theological and philosophical discussion. <laughs> yeah, that's gotta be right. God's gotta be really powerful. He is. That's what I thought, too. Thanks, Sachan. Sometimes he'd suddenly talk about God or other weird stuff. More often he'd sit rocking on a swing, staring off into the distance with a blank look on his face. It was the old familiar expression from the first time I met him. The expression he'd stopped making after we became friends. 
I had a vague idea that something must have happened at Yukun's home. But I was still just a kid, powerless to offer any real help. When Yukun asked me those questions, clearly searching for reassurance, all I could do was listen, nod, and try to hide my concern. At the same time, the blizzard of work that had buried my parents for so long was finally starting to slow down a bit. <gasps> the machines weren't clattering quite as late into the night as they used to. Once or twice, I went home early to find my parents making small talk with strangers in suits. Like most kids, I did get pretty curious about what the adults were talking about, but when I eavesdropped, all I got was a bunch of words I didn't really understand flying back and forth. I got the idea they were talking about the machines in the workshop, but the specifics went right over my head. They're probably buying replacements for the old machines while it's not so busy. But only a few days after I reached that conclusion, our housekeeper told me that she'd be leaving the job. <gasps> oh yeah! I, I mean, I mean... <laughs> sorry, housekeeper, we're gonna miss seeing you, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping the reason that she's leaving the job is because they don't need her anymore. <laughs> Apparently, Mom told her that she'd be able to handle the chores by herself again. Yeah, okay, good, good. <laughs> it was nice that my parents were getting less busy and that Mom would be looking after the house again, but... At the time, my mind was so full of anxious thoughts about Yukun that I couldn't manage to feel happy about anything else. Lately, he'd been showing up at the playground a lot less frequently. A certain place. Burp, burp. Sorry. I got something I have to do today. I have to head home now. <laughs> Sorry, I got a fan. I don't think I can come tomorrow. But I'll play with you the day after that, okay? Yeah, sure. Bye, Sachan. Our meetings slowly grew fewer and further between. The loneliness reminded me of the painful days when my parents had first begun ignoring me in favor of their job. Watching helplessly as Yukun trudged away, my mind churned with sadness and fear. At this rate, Yukun's going to leave me too. I couldn't let that happen again. I couldn't let another person I loved abandon me. This time I had to stop it somehow. <laughs> That's why I decided to kill his sister. <laughs> the next time I saw Yukun, I decided to use my birthday as an excuse to coax him into spending more time with me. Party time! Party time! <laughs> oh, really? Actually, I probably won't be able to play with you for a while, Sachan. Uh-oh. A bunch of stuff happened at home. I think it's going to be hard for me to get outside from now on. Uh-oh. Turns out, there isn't any such thing as God. Oh, what made you think- what made you come to that conclusion? Yeah. Nobody's gonna protect me anymore. I probably won't be able to play in the park like this again. Oh, is his sister already dead? From something else? I'm sorry. I know I should have told you sooner, but... Sachan, you always looked forward to playing with me. I didn't want to make you sad. But vanishing suddenly without telling you would be even worse. So today, I came to say goodbye. I don't know for sure, but it's definitely possible. And I snuck out of the house today, so I have to get back before Dad notices. I'm sorry, I can't celebrate it with you, Sachan. Okay, I'm gonna go now. Uh oh, yeah, that's where the flashback came in. 
As Yukon slowly walked away for the very last time, I yelled at the top of my lungs, more loudly and more desperately than I ever had in my entire life. But he never paused. He never turned back. Yukun's leaving me. Maybe I was right. Maybe everyone I love abandons me. Paralyzed by miserable self-pity, I couldn't even chase after him. For a long time after that abrupt farewell, I could only stand stock still at the entrance to the park, wallowing in confusion and pain. And on the morning of my tenth birthday, rubbing my red swollen eyes as I crawled out of bed, I immediately realized that something was different. For one thing, I couldn't hear the droning of the machines that had been running from the early morning hours for months now, and for another, the smell of fresh miso soup was wafting through the air from the kitchen. Could that be mom cooking? What about work? Still half asleep and completely nonplussed, I wandered over to the living room, where an unexpected sight was waiting for me. Ooh! Mom and Dad were sitting next to each other on the far side of the table, almost as if they'd been waiting for me to wake up. After greeting me, they waited with gentle smiles for my answer. It almost felt like I was reliving a memory from the days before they'd become so busy. Their sheer surprise was such that it took me a moment to find a response. どうしたたち。そんなに目を丸くして。だって今日は機械の音がしないし、それにお父さんとお母さんがこの時間に家にいるなんて。ファケーション。そうだな。自分たちの指摘したことを考えれば、幸が驚くのも無理はないか。今まで
Looking back on it now, it wasn't much more than an irrational outburst of pent-up emotion. But still, rather than feeling happy at their promise to celebrate my birthday together, I was outraged at my parents for wrapping up all the sadness and pain I'd felt for so long into those bland words about feeling lonely. Oh, thank goodness, the park that we play at every day. They'll never find us here. And in the end, my blind, aimless flight carried me to the familiar playground. I hadn't consciously thought about making my way here. If anything, I was intentionally trying to stay away from the area close to my home. At some point, I'd definitely passed a hospital much further away than this place. Even so, some unconscious part of my mind had guided me to this destination. The impact of the previous day's events must have been just that strong. I couldn't simply accept that unbelievably abrupt goodbye. As Yukun left, I had screamed that I'd be waiting for him today. If I forced a one-sided promise on him, maybe he'd slip out of his house to see me. That selfish, childish hope was still alive inside me. Wiping the sweat from my forehead, I looked up to the tall clock tower nearby. It was a little past ten in the morning. Yukun always came to that playground about half past one on the weekends. But I decided I might as well start waiting now. That way, I'd be here even if Yukun came early. And if Mom and Dad showed up, I could always just run away again. Trying to disguise the pain and anxiety growing inside me, I forced myself to believe in this spur-of-the-moment plan. I walked over to the swing set, where two of us had always been sat side by side and settled into my seat. The day before, I told Yukun I would wait for him at this park. <sighs> but it wasn't like he promised to come play with me. He hadn't even responded to my words. There was no guarantee Yukun would come to this park. Still, I had absolute faith that he'd show up eventually, and I was pretty confident that I would wait patiently until then. But as the clock's hour hand made its way past the five, and my vigil approached its eighth hour, even that childish confidence began to waver. Goodbye, but not farewell. The playground had always felt too small for us. Sudden, the playground that had always felt too small for us suddenly seemed an unbelievably suddenly seemed an unbelievably large and empty place. You couldn't have told me clearly enough that he couldn't play with me anymore. That even getting outside would be difficult from now on. Could he even make it to the park if he wanted to? Having regained the ability to think rationally with the passage of time, my mind ruthlessly chipped away at my unfounded confidence. And finally, I arrived at the realization that I'd backed myself into a miserable corner. Once that timid thought passed through my mind, it was only a matter of time. The painful emotions I'd been covering up with my anger came bubbling back to the surface. I was really mean to Mom and Dad again. They were going to play with me, and I ruined everything. This isn't any different from last year. Even if I go home tonight, my birthday is just going to be Mom and Dad yelling at me. With each thought, the anxiety and regret swelled up uncontrollably inside me. Before I knew it, fat tears were running down my cheeks. <laughs> when I squeezed my eyes closed to shut out the world, I saw my parents in my mind's eye. Their faces gentle and kind. No matter how lonely they'd made me, and no matter how much I tried to hate them for it, in the end I still loved them both. Very much. Tati! And in the moment I finally understood, I thought I could hear those same familiar voices, not in my memories, but somewhere nearby. Tati! Tati! I raised my head up with a jerk, indifferent now to the tears that continued to pour from my eyes. Outside the park, just on the other side of the road, I saw my mom and dad. Even from a distance, I could tell they were covered in sweat, that they'd been desperately searching for me. <sighs> mom and dad are still mom and dad after all, the people I love most in the whole world. I should have known that all alone. Why couldn't I have accepted them from the start? No, there was no longer any point in even thinking about it. I was wrong. Now all I had to do was apologize. All I had to do was jump into their arms and yell, I'm sorry for being so selfish. Once the two of them noticed my presence, their expressions instantly melted with relief. I dashed out of the park, overwhelmed with happiness, and I hear a sudden roar of displaced air, 
like the sound of a fierce wind. In the next instant, the world before me was filled with a colossal jet, back, jet black blur. Uh, what? I heard the sound of something colliding with something else, then screeching to a halt nearby. I had reflexively squeezed my eyes shut. When I timidly opened them, I was greeted with the unimaginable. Oh, fudge. Mom and Dad were stretched out flat on the road surface, almost as if sleeping face down. Mom, oh. Dad didn't even stir. A machine with a dead battery. Mom twitched convulsively again and again like a broken toy. The blood pooling under their bodies crept slowly across the orange-tinted asphalt, dyeing the road a dusty red. Oh! Well, that went from... Oh, that went to an 11 real fast. Oh, boy. I can't use that as a thumbnail. Oh, crap. <laughs> and that's why you look both ways before crossing. Those agonized groans so totally unlike any other sound I'd ever heard my mother make filled me with a terror too pure and primal to express in words. My ears had begun to rain, as if to drown out the unpleasant sound of the truck's engine idling nearby. With every moment that passed, my breaths came faster and faster. I couldn't fully grasp what had just happened before my eyes, but instinctively I understood that it was something so awful as to wipe everything that had come before into complete irrelevance. At least it wasn't Sachi that got hit by the truck! What do I do? What do I do? Right, I've got to call for help. At times like these, call 911 first. D this kid is a lot calmer in this situation than most kids. My mind was still capable of thinking about what I should do next. And yet my body was frozen on the spot as if physically rejecting the incomprehensible situation before me. At the sound of my name, I turned my eyes back to the ground. My mother was dragging herself slowly across the road toward me, desperately trying to communicate something. Oh, jeez. The sight instantly reduced me to a panicked frenzy. All I could do now was shriek her name. Lifting her trembling upper body ever so slightly off the ground, she slowly raised her face and then... And then she spoke those words. In that instant, I thought I could hear something snap inside me. As my body began to quiver uncontrollably, the world was covered in a black shroud. A split second after the buzzing drone inside my head finally went silent, I lost consciousness entirely. Understandable. Apparently, a local passerby quickly reported the incident, and it wasn't long before the ambulances carried us away. Not that I remember any of that. When I opened my eyes the next time, a full day had passed, and I was lying in a colorless hospital room. Did I only start playing the game today, or have I been playing it for a few streams now? Oh, this is stream number 12 or 13. I've been playing this game for a long time. This is a long game. <sighs> oh, boy. Well, that was un oh, that was unexpected, and that got real violent real fast. Sachi, mega sametanka. Oh, thank goodness, Sachi's uncle is here. I heard a chair scraping against the linoleum floor nearby. A moment later, a familiar face appeared before me. No, this is one- I think this is supposed to be one of the longest visual novels there is. Like, this is one root of five. <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna do all five, but... I gingerly moved my arms and legs several times, but I couldn't find anything wrong with my body. So, 
My uncle smiled broadly at my words, tears in the corners of his eyes. Still a little dopey from waking up, I felt a simple curiosity about in the intense emotion so evident in his face. When I put the question into words, my uncle averted his eyes, his expression filled with reluctance and pain. They both died, didn't they? As I dully repeated my uncle's words, a memory that had slipped cleanly from my mind slowly reemerged. A small park died in the light of the evening sun. The smell of burning rubber, the sound of a truck idling. And finally, <laughs> mom and dad lying in pools of their own blood. <gasps> that well, that would definitely give a ten-year-old PTSD. <laughs> Yeesh. The scene flashed before my eyes in perfect clarity. Reflexively, I tried to look away, but there was no escape, and in the, ne the next moment, my ears were filled with that awful droning buzz. Sochi. My field of vision grew slowly narrower, and a choking sense of paralysis spread throughout my body. It felt as though my body temperature had suddenly plunged. A violent wave of nausea and a splitting headache fil attacked me all at once. I'm kind of surprised Sachi was able to go back to that park in the present day. Like... I feel like I feel like if that happened to me, I'd be like, I don't ever want to go to that park again. Uh, I do have a Discord server. Yes. Uh, if you go down to, if you scroll down a little bit, I, there should be a link from Twitch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That uh, you can get alerts for when I go live there, and it's only a small number of people there, but feel free to join if you're welcome. Anybody's welcome to join. Glad to have you. Oi, Sachi, don't jump on. Alright, on a scale of 1 to 10, how difficult is this going to be to watch? Sachi! Sachi got a mirror, Samasan, this is going to be a good thing. Okay, thank goodness that didn't last too long. <laughs> That would have been difficult to watch otherwise. As the world grew dim before my eyes, I could vaguely make out my uncle shouting desperately for someone's attention. Wait, now I can't see or hear anything. Oh, guess I'm fainting again. The instant the thought ran through my head, I plunged in no into nothingness. I'm finishing this flashback. <laughs> I don't care it's 4 o'clock. I don't care if I've been streaming three hours. I'm finishing this. <laughs> It would be a full three days before I woke up again. When the nurse noticed my eyes were open, she immediately called the doctor in charge, who conducted a quick examination on the spot. After determining that I wasn't so severely impaired as to cause difficulties in ordinary conversation, the doctor began to explain many things to me. Uncle Akihiro, who came running over to the hospital, soon joined in as well. That day, Mom and Dad had been in a traffic accident right before my eyes. Just as I ran out toward them, a truck with a drunk driver behind the wheel had barreled through the intersection, ignoring a red light. Don't drink and drive. Hit head-on by the massive vehicle, which had been traveling at 60 kilometers an hour or so, my dad died instantly from massive blunt force trauma. Mom had miraculously survived? But at that moment, she was still unconscious, fighting for her life in critical condition. I am amazed her mom survived that. When I learned all this, I didn't cry and grieve, and I didn't explode with anger against the man who'd caused the accident. The words the doctor used were really hard to understand, so a lot of conversation went over my head. That probably had something to do with it. But more than anything else, nothing about the situation felt remotely real to me. <laughs> that night, finally alone in my darkened hospital room, I flexed my legs and arms thoughtfully. No matter how many times I tested it, my body didn't feel injured. I could move just as freely and easily as before. And... Maybe Dad was dead. Maybe Mom was lying unconscious somewhere in this hospital. But I hadn't seen either of them yet. So maybe everyone telling me about this accident was just lying. Maybe if I were to get up out of bed and head straight home, my parents would be waiting for me there. Denial is a strong thing. 
My thoughts persistently return to these comforting paper fin theories. And more importantly, in the depths of my mind, a clear memory remained. The instant my thoughts brushed against that fragment of the past, I could hear my heart throb violently in my chest. This time, the shrill buzzing that had accompanied the similar incident three days earlier was conspicuously absent. In exchange, the most severe headache of my life fell upon me with all the suddenness and force of an avalanche. This poor girl. The sharp burst of pain, as if my body had warned me not to touch an open wound, robbed me of my will to think. Then I'll just stop trying. I'm sick of fainting. As soon as I emptied my mind, the headache it vanished with astonishing speed. My breaths became easier, and I could feel my heartbeat gradually returning to its normal, normal rhythm. There's something wrong with my body after all. Nothing like this ever happened to me before that day. As my mind began to reach a conclusion I didn't want to accept, I involuntarily recalled the agony I had just endured. If I remember what happened, that pain will come back. The ensuing wave of terror wiped all else from my mind. Pulling the blankets over my head in search of refuge, I waited for the morning to come. Did that accident they keep talking about really happen? Several days later, the disbelief still lingered in my mind, and I was taken to visit my mom in the intensive care unit for the first time. After carefully disinfecting my hands with alcohol, the nurses dressed me up in a hospital gown just like theirs and they finally ushered me into the room. And just as they told me, my mother was inside. But the person lying on the bed in front of me wasn't the mom I knew. There was a huge oxygen mask covering her mouth. Bandages were wrapped around her head. Numerous tubes were sticking out of her body, connecting her to all sorts of machines. The sight reminded me of nothing so much as the Frankenstein monsters that I'd seen in movies. But this was reality. Um... So, Marty does not stream. She occasionally will do co-op Let's Plays uh, with me, but she doesn't stream. Hey, no worries. I, I like having active Twitch chat. That day, the accident happened exactly as they told me, and now my mom was sleeping in a nest of machines. It, it's more just like... <laughs> it can honestly be, be kind of good to break up some of the... the what's happening on screen is really intense. <laughs> So, it could kind of be good to break that up so it's not, like, super a super downer. In the instant, I finally perceived that undeniable fact as reality I was struck by a powerful wave of nausea. Uh-oh. The hospital room grew dark before me, and in that darkness, a fuzzy image flickered before my eyes, disappearing for the briefest of moments only to reemerge, like some pale, indistinct horror bobbing up and down just beneath the surface of a muddy lake. Uh-oh. Unable to endure the sickness swelling up from the core of my body, I vomited up the contents of my stomach on the spot and was hastily carried out of the room by the nurse who'd accompanied me. That's understandable! By that, I mean, it's understandable to vomit at that site. After that, I tried to return to the ICU normal numerous times, but the outcome was always the same. <laughs> It's, it's, <laughs> what, what do they call this, um, where, like, something serious is happening, happening, oh, mood whiplash, that's, that's what it is, <laughs> we've got this really, like, serious and emotional part of the story, and then we're breaking it up with Twitch chat, it's fine, my doctor took these events very seriously, and eventually forbid me to, from visiting mom for the time being, That night, I was I laid awake in bed until well after the lights had turned out, unable to fall asleep. I hadn't suffered any real injuries, so sitting around all day often left me with too much physical energy. Sometimes I would go an entire day without feeling hungry, or lie awake in bed for hours. And today, the things I'd heard during the daytime were also weighing heavily on my mind. I lay in my bed, staring up at the now-familiar tiles on the ceiling, and thought about my parents. Mm. 
What is with visual novels having terrible things happen to girls on their birthdays? First Kotomi and now Sachi. She might never open her eyes again. Sometimes I'd overhear my uncle talking about it with the nurses in lowered tones. Apparently mom was sick with something called a persistent vegetative state. From what I could figure out, that meant the possibility she'd wake up again was really, really low. Mom's going to be asleep forever and ever. In other words, I'd never be able to talk at her to her again. A bitter frustration welled up inside of me at the thought. But no matter how I tried to deny the reality, nothing would change. Even if my parents' job would no longer keep us apart, the blissful days I'd wished for would never return. The more I understood the situation, the heavier my despair grew. Tears spilled relentlessly from my eyes. My mind was filled with a miserable new question. Why? Why had it turned out like this? In reality, I hadn't been able to see him. And because of that sudden accident, Dad was dead and Mom was sleeping forever. Everything. Everything I loved had been taken from me in one horrible instant. I squeezed my eyes shut in an attempt to escape the cruel reality of my situation. I thought I heard someone's voice in my mind. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is getting dark. I mean, it was dark to begin with, but... Oh, this is messed up. This is messed up. <laughs> Since the day I accepted that the accident had really happened, these feelings had been lurking unacknowledged in the depths of my mind. That accident happened because of me. If I'd listened to my parents and stayed in the house, they wouldn't have been in the street when that truck ran the red light. Uh, the stupidest thing about that accident was that it literally, like, it was just dumb random chance that it happened. It was, ugh. I mean, that's probably how most accidents happen. Yeah, I've played the Ace Attorney games. I've played all of them, personally, except for the two Japanese-only ones with, like, the Ancestor. And then my sister and I are kind of playing them progressively on our channel. Oh! Oh, yeah! You're the person from his... Okay, I was wondering. I'm like, I, f I figured you either knew of me or somehow. Okay, th thanks for letting me know. <laughs> Okay, f thanks for telling me that. <laughs> yeah, my sister is Colorful Marty. So she and I do co-op Let's Plays of the Ace Attorney games on my channel. And we we've recorded a lot of them, but we're uploading them gradually as it goes on. Even you, Kuhn. I selfishly tried to manipulate him into coming into the park. Maybe that's why he didn't show up. Maybe he just finally got sick of me. In other words... No, you didn't sound creepy. I was just like, where did this guy come from that's, like, super super interested in my stuff? <laughs> Should have put two and two together. As I spoke those words, the ringing in my ears returned for the first time in a while, harsher and shriller than ever before. 
A dull paralysis spread through my body, very similar to what I used to experience before fainting from overexertion on the playground. But the venomous chill crawling up my spine clearly signified that this was something else entirely. But <laughs> something shadowy and unfamiliar and malevolent was attacking my body. <gasps> my heart thumped violently in my chest, and in that moment the world froze around me. The air wasn't cold, it was solid ice, so frigid as to cause physical pain. My clenched teeth began to chatter loudly. My mouth opened wide, I desperately gulped down oxygen in little gasps, every breath a painful struggle. I was wrong. And something even worse is coming next. The voice ran out of my mind again, as I knew it would. Jeez, that jump scared me! I thought my game had crashed for a second there. And so the nightmares began. Jeez Louise, this is a long flashback! Two weeks after that how horrible night, it had become my daily routine to turn aside the spoonfuls of food that the nurses offered me. At night, when exhaustion overcame me, I was forced to relive the moment of my parents' accident over and over again. By now I had completely lost the will to live. The nightmares didn't just play back my memories of that day. They caused me physical agony, incomparable to any suffering I endured while awake. It's not even close to being over? Is that a joke, or is that actually a thing? Because I thought we were at least pre getting pretty close to the end. My appetite disappeared in a matter of days, and of course I couldn't get any real rest. After about a week, my body had grown visibly frail, and my natural energy was replaced with lethargy and weakness. Two days after a concerned nurse reported the situation to my doctor, he came to my bedside and asked me about a bunch of things. Can you hear voices from nowhere in particular? Can you see people who can't really be there? I'm pretty sure the questions were mostly like that. And from my answers, it took the doctor no time at all to announce that I was suffering from a specific illness. To summarize it in his words, a mental illness caused by temporary exposure to catastrophically intense stress. With that diagnosis, it became clear that I had suffered my own wound in that accident, and my previously scheduled discharge from the hospital was postponed indefinitely.